So for the meditators, um, if you want to offer something to go in the stupa, there is a bowl of crystals. You can you can take a crystal. We're giving those crystal entra. Mark Berger will give you those crystals, and you can offer them into the sutta uh, into the stupa <laughs> uh, when Bhante Kusla gives us the word. Okay, so um, I guess we should just go ahead and get started. Welcome to Dhammasukha Meditation Center here in Annapolis, Missouri. And it's about 10 a.m. now, and uh, I want to welcome you to this um, blessing and memorial service for Bhante Vimala Ramsey and Usi Lananda. I think everybody knows who Bhante is. Well, maybe you don't know who I am. So my name is David Johnson, and I was Bhante's attendant uh, from 2010 onward and especially it's been interesting in the last few years as his health declined but uh, i i've been a um, supporter of twim since 2007 after many years of doing vipassana bhante kusla and bhante samita are here with us bhante kusla uh, joined the twim twim forces in 2013 when he went to when it came out to do a rains retreat, right? Rains was there two rains retreat, two rains, two, two rains retreats, and uh, he's been a supporter of Twim ever since. He's helped Bonte do translating uh, for the meditators in Sri Lanka, and uh, has traveled with him and many other things. And and he is now at the Peace House in Boston, uh, which he's founded, and Bonte Samita worked with him at the Peace House. And he's relatively new to Twim, but I, I think he likes it. <laughs> so, and I also want to uh, welcome our online presence out in uh, YouTube land. And uh, there's probably 15 to 20 people watching right now. Um, the stupa was just started like three weeks ago. We had a lot of mis misfires. And finally, uh, where's Jerry at? He's not here. Uh, Jerry and his cohort, Doug, uh, our um, carpenter and lawn, lawn attendant, uh, decided to just take matters into their own hands and watch some videos with Bonte Kusla's help and direction, uh, figure this out. And they figured it out uh, in a just a glorious, uh, uh, what what appears now will be an amazing stupa. Uh, stupa. Um, what's going to happen here is go there will be a another layer put on. So this will be a smooth dome, and it will be gold. But for now, you know, it serves a purpose, and it has the relic chamber in there. And Bhante Kusla will uh, explain more about this. So I'm going to start today by reading from the Mahaparinibbana Sutta. Benefits of a stupa. For, this is a part of it. Formerly, Lord, on leaving their quarters after the rains, the bhikkhus would set forth to see the Tathagata. And to us, there was the gain and benefit of receiving and associated with those very revered bhikkhus who came to have audience with the Blessed One and to wait upon him. But, Lord, after the Blessed One has gone, we shall no longer have that gain and benefit. Now, this is when the Buddha uh, was going to die, or had died. So, uh, four places of pilgrimage. There are four places, Ananda, that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. What are the four? Here the Tathagata was born. This, Ananda, is a place that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. Here, the Tathagata became fully enlightened in unsurpassed supreme enlightenment. This, Ananda, is a place that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. Here, the Tathagata set rolling the unexcelled 
Wheel of the Dhamma. This Ananda is a place that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. Here Tathagata, here the Tathagata passed away into the state of Nibbana in which no element of clinging remains. This Ananda is a place that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. These Ananda are the four places that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. And truly there will come to these places, Ananda, pious bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, laymen and laywomen, reflecting here the Tathagata was born, here the Tathagata became fully enlightened in unsurpassed supreme enlightenment. Here the Tathagata set rolling the unexcelled wheel of the Dhamma. Here the Tathagata passed away into the state of Nibbana in which no element of clinging remains. And whoever Ananda should die on such a pilgrimage with his heart established in faith at the breaking up of the body after death will be reborn in a realm of heavenly happiness. And the more important part here, there are four persons, Ananda, who are worthy of a stupa. Who are these four? A Tathagata, an Arahat, a fully enlightened one is worthy of a stupa. So also is a Pacheka Buddha and a disciple of a Tathagata and a universal monarch. So we're all disciples. And of course, Bhante Vilmaramsi and Usila Nanda were one of the greatest disciples of the Buddha. And why Ananda is a Tathagata, an Arahat, a fully enlightened one worthy of a stupa? Because Ananda at the thought, this is the stupa of the blessed one, Arahat, fully enlightened one, the hearts of many people will be calmed and made happy. And so calmed and with their minds established in faith therein at the breaking up of the body after death, they will be reborn in a realm of heavenly happiness. And so also at the thought, this is the stupa of that Pacheka Buddha, this is the stupa of a disciple of the Tathagata Arahat, fully enlightened one, or this is the stupa of the righteous monarch who ruled, ruled according to the Dhamma. The hearts of many people are calmed and made happy, and so calmed with their minds established in faith therein, at the breaking up of the body after death, they will be reborn in a realm of heavenly happiness. And it is because of this, Ananda, that these four persons are worthy of a stupa. So there's a reading from the suttas. So what's going to happen today is uh, we have four, actually five people who will say a few things, and these are the OGs. These are the people that have been with Bonte forever for them. And uh, that will be Brenda and her husband, Scott, and uh, Kirsten, uh, my administrative assistant at Damasuka, uh, and... Um, uh, where are we? Drew Litchie, who is teaching the current retreat here at Damasuka. And, um, uh, and uh, yeah, okay, Antra and Mark, right, I said you, okay. Uh, and then Bhante Kusla will explain the meaning of the stupa, and he'll do the blessing ceremony. And just, I'll just say a few things. I mean, I think everybody knows the story of Bhante and his really re rediscovering the path to Nibbana. Uh, get, get that book, by the way, The Path to Nibbana. It's a really good book. <laughs> but I wrote that book to explain everything that Bonte taught me and taught us. It's all there. I said, Bonte, you have to write this book. And he says, no, you write it. So I did. And it's got everything in there. And, and I even now, every day, I get an email. Hey, I'm, I'm reading the book. I'm practicing. Uh, this stuff really works. And they're going into the jhanas just reading the book. So this is this is the heritage of, of the legacy of Bhante and his teachings. It's out there. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere. And you're here. And we're here. And, and we are so thankful and grateful for his teaching. Now, Bhante Vilmaramsi was an attendant to Venerable Usilananda. Venerable Usilananda was a... Uh, right-hand man of Venerable uh, Mahasi Sayada in Burma. And he was an Abhidhamma scholar. He had memorized, he was a Bivamsa, and he had memorized 
something like 12,000 pages of the suttas um, and taken a test on that and become uh, uh, recognized for that achievement in Burma. And he was sent here by Mahasi Sayada to send the teachings of Vipassana to the Western world. And he did that in the San Francisco Bay Area. And that's where he, uh, 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 Bhante Vilmaramsi met him and uh, became his attendant. And um, it was in, after many years of um, studying Vipassana in Burma as a monk for a couple of years, uh, there was, he did a retreat for two years. He decided that uh, whatever they had to teach him, it just, it wasn't the right path. And he went to Malaysia and uh, a venerable Punaji uh, explained to him, you need to put the Vasudhi Maga down and you need, and the commentaries, and you need to look at the suttas again. And he looked at the suttas and he found all these things that he had not known about. He found the idea of the jhanas. He found uh, that you needed jhanas to uh, arrive at Nibbana. He found the relaxed step, tranquilize the bodily and the mental formations. This is sitting in plain sight in the suttas, in the very suttas that they use for Vipassana, which is the Satipatthana and the Anapanisati Sutta. It says, tranquilize the bodily and mental formations as you breathe in and you breathe out. And he found that, he tried it, he walked down the street in Malaysia, he would be thinking some thoughts and then he would just relax and he'd see what would happen. And then he would try it again. And he thought, you know, I, I'm having this quiet space after I relax. And uh, it was starting to work. And he tried it with a bowl of mangoes. He took a taste of the mango and relaxed that delight, that liking of the, of the flavor of the mango. And then he thought, I'll have another piece of mango. Pretty soon the entire bowl was gone. <laughs> and he thought, I should have another bowl, but uh, I, I think I, I understand now. So he found this path. He actually founded a meditation center in Malaysia, a small center there. And eventually though, he came back to this country and I think we know kind of the rest of the story. And he founded uh, this uh, center with Sister Kema, who passed away just around 48 hours ago. So Venerable Sister Kema is also no longer with us and they're doing a memorial for her in India. Um, actually right now, so almost at the same time. And she uh, helped to found Dhammasukha. Uh, she was the administrative push behind Bhante to get all of these things set up. And so we owe a debt of gratitude to her. And as well, she got a very big uh, inheritance, nearly a quarter of a million dollars from one of her relatives. And she gave that all, all that money to, to the center here. And that's why the, the dining hall and the kitchen and the landscaping and many of these things exist because of, of that donation that, that she did. And so we thank her for that. And um, let's, let's hear from a few other people. How about Mark and Antra? Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna put this right here. Okay. okay. <clears throat> um, Antra and I uh, uh, moved into a new home in San Diego, and we had uh, two uh, two houses on that site. And uh, Bonte and a friend of his were our first tenants, and he and I talked a lot about consciousness, which was something that we were interested in. And, and uh, we were looking at the exploration of some of the early writings of Carlos Castaneda and the, uh, the, t the teachings of Don Juan. And we thought, well, there's gotta be a, a natural way to do this without you know, some substance. And so uh, we started, I started looking around and I heard about a meditation with the uh, uh, Theosophical Society, but the two books that we were given were, one was The Heart 
of Buddhist meditation by Nyanapanika Tara, and the other one was the uh, practical insight meditation by the Mahasi Sayadaw, which was the noting practice for Vipassana that was coming into this country at that time. And so that's where we really began our practice, and uh, I think that was around 1972. So uh, we both uh, shared the uh, the the process and the awakening work and the and the Buddha's teaching, but I really appreciated his uh, embracing the truth, the uh, the reality of the uh, process and the reality of the practice and what was working. And so he was constantly uh, trying different things and uh, experimenting and seeing you know, the kind of results that, that, he, that he could get with his mind and sharing that with us. And so we, uh, we felt that uh, his teaching was incredibly effective when, it, when people started falling into the stream. And this was the validity and of the truth and of the... Should I take that thing? Well, Bhante Bimala Ramsey was a giant presence in our lives. Um, we had, as Mark said, we had been doing Vipassana meditation uh, since 1975. And um, we uh, knew Bhante from that time. And then he had many travels um, up to San Francisco, um, then to Asia, and then he came back from Asia in 1998. And because his mother lived in our area, he came back to the San Diego area, and uh, we reestablished um, our continuing friendship. And he said, I have something better to teach you. And so <laughs> the very first retreat in the United States with the new practice was in Julian, California in um, 1998. So um, the first retreat was with five people, four adults, and one fetus. And uh, at that time, we were um, introduced to metta meditation and the Brahma Viharas and the six R's. At that time, the six R's were brought forth. Um, so, um, Bhante um, was very persistent and very courageous. And he actually took quite a bit of, um, um, I, I wouldn't call it exactly abuse, but um, a lot of shunning from um, people who were following the old traditions. Oh, for, the, for one reason, um, he welcomed the assistance of Sister Kema. And in many circles, a monk would not be um, revered if he had a woman uh, as his attendant. And he was very um, um, courageous, really, in, in, in uh, recognizing um, the sincerity of Sister Kema, her power, and um, embracing her um, energy to help with spreading the Dhamma. And so um, there were many um, monastic people that shunned him for that. Um, so um, David already has talked about her influence here at the center 
and also out in the world because after she physically left the center, she went to Asia and she was spreading twin in Asia. Uh, also, Bhante was ostracized for, in some circles, for his approach to meditation. Um, um, he relied on the suttas. And um, in the areas where the suttas and the Vasudhimaga, which was revered in Burma, um, had a conflict, he always went with the uh, teaching of the suttas. And so there were people that shunned him for that. And he had the courage to just stick with what he knew to be correct and effective. So um, what I want to say is that more personally for Mark and me, we've had the great blessing of uh, helping Bhante in actualizing his vision. Um, we were able to help him in the beginning to develop the center, um, both um, materially and, and uh, also with our, with our, I guess, friendship. Um, and through his teaching, we've been able to experience the Dhamma which is such a blessing. Um, and it has been a great benefit in our marriage of 52 years. So um, I guess in closing, I want to uh, thank Bhante. Hello, I am Drew Litchie. I'm closer. Uh, hi. <laughs> I'm Drew Litchie. I uh, am proud to call Bonte my teacher, um, my mentor, and amazingly my friend. I met him in 2006 in person. Um, before that, we had corresponded by email, and I'd done an online retreat with him and sister. That retreat was supposed to be eight days, and it went on to 13 or 14 days. We were all having a lot of fun. Um, and then finally, I came down to the center to meet him in person. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about what that was like here. We're in a, a very luxurious meditation center right now. I don't think you've noticed any chiggers or uh, any spiders hanging from the trees. Uh, when I came here in 2006, there was no GPS available. Uh, and many of us who came then, we had to use paper maps and find our way. And, and I got lost. I got lost in Farmington and went the wrong direction. And I had to call with a payphone to get here uh, and, and call sister on the payphone. And she answered the phone. Um, part of getting here in the early days was, was actually getting here. The, the challenge of, of getting and being here was something. Uh, so when we when you arrived here, there was the A-frame. There was two trailers, and then there was a small, uh, simply the, the log cabin where we do the interviews now. That is all that was here. There was some roads. There was no light up top here. And we all lived and worked uh, in the A-frame or, or there. At that time, at first retreat, it was myself, sister, Bonte, and another, uh, another man named Michael. In the first couple of years, it was like that. And so retreats here were different. You'd wake up in the morning and wait in line for the single bathroom. And then we would all sit together in the Dhamma Hall. Um, and sitting with Bonte in those days was spectacular. He would sit in his red chair, smiling, silent, unmoving. Uh, really inspirational. And learning from that was a, was a big part of the early training, simply being around Bonte. 
uh, we would get up for breakfast around seven and Bonte would be, would go till 8.30, 9.30, whatever he felt like. And came out and have his uh, everything bagel with cream cheese and coffee every single morning. That's that's what happened. And and yogi jobs in those days were uh, they were work. Uh, we were clearing land. My first yogi job was building a roof on the back of the A-frame. The first yogi job was building a roof. So mowing lawns, tilling the ground, carrying uh, logs and sawing. It was it was real. A little bit of weeding and sweeping the tile floor. It's a little different, yeah. And then we all made lunch together, or I should I say sister made us lunch in a very small kitchen uh, where only her and maybe one other person possibly could help. And we all, all ate lunch together around a single table in the A-frame. And I have to say there was no, no silence on those retreats. Uh, we were all talking and discussing the Dhamma, discussing our practice and everything, this and that. And that was actually a very important part of, of those days is how small of a community it was. Uh, Bonte was always available. Um, you could just walk and knock on his door and he would be happy to answer and talk with you whenever you had a question. When we had, uh, when we had interviews, there was no space. So we all did the interviews together in the meditation hall. And so we all knew what was happening with all of us. Um, and that was also incredibly valuable um, to hear how the process went with everyone. Um, so when I think about those times, I, I, an important part of Bhante uh, and how he was is he was human and he maintained being as human and being as connected uh, to you as a person as possible. He was one who could rally great authority uh, and yep, he could admonish very well, but he, the authority came from his robes, from the Buddha's teaching. It came not from, uh, not from any kind of personal specialness and he made sure to be as human as possible with you. And you know, you knew, you knew what his, he was like as a person. And that's why you respected him from what he taught and how he was. And that's something I'll always take from him, the importance of connection with people uh, as, as we are. And he was always himself uh, when you interacted with him. Uh, you knew where he came from and what he meant. Those days we were, it was being built and it was being built uh, slowly. And as we talked about, uh, Bonte was separated from his community. Um, and as, as I think about what that meant, uh, he told us at that time, he told us at that time what that meant, but uh, over the years, I really am starting to understand how significant that was for him. Um, the first thing he told to me uh, when I was gonna learn to teach meditation and he uh, made me start teaching you know, is, uh, you need to have a thick skin when you teach this uh, because you will be criticized. So I, I think about that, uh, what, what he, the, the, the courageousness he needed to have to bring this forward uh, every step of the way. Um, and building the center, he really made it look easy. Uh, I had no idea how hard it was actually um, until reflecting back and seeing what that meant to be separated from his sangha and to be criticized by people he respect and his teachers and so on uh, for teaching what he knew was right. So that's another thing I think it's important to understand about Bonte is he was willing to do that uh, no matter what. Uh, he knew what, he, what the truth was and he was willing to bring that forth uh, no matter the consequences to himself. And here we are today uh, as a, in, in this beautiful center with uh, the twin teachings across the world. Um, and he succeeded in his vision. Uh, and he succeeded in bringing help and rallying uh, people behind him. And with the help of sister, uh, here we are. Good morning, Bente. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Dhamma. 
Uh, my name is Brenda and this is Scott, my husband. And we knew Bante in 2008 from Mark and Antra in San Diego. We used to live in San Diego and um, we learned from Tanjev uh, uh, in the class. And they mentioned to us that there is this monk who is teaching from the Sutta. And at the time, I never knew a monk reading suttas. So in, with my limited um, uh, knowledge at the time. So we met him in 2008 in one of the one day retreat in Laguna Beach. And when I saw him reading the sutta, I knew he is my teacher. And I told him, I found my home at the time. With tears in her with eyes. With tears in my eyes. And then because, as you see, I look purple. And if you remember Sister Kemas in the beginning, she wore purple robes and that just got me into, I want to be like her. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, we learned, we went to a retreat in Joshua Tree in 2009. And then before we went back to Indonesia for good, uh, we came to the center, which as Drew mentioned that it was only an A-frame building and we, I stayed in a kuti and he stayed in a different kuti and one of the trees what were was uprooted. It was like this as we come back in 2023. I made it many times in the past with Vipassana. And I would do a 10 day or seven uh, seven days retreat with other teachers, of course, in Indonesia. And I didn't have personality change. Um, after two or three weeks. I would go back to the same spitfire as I was before. So my mom would be asking, why are you spending this much time on retreats, wasting time, wasting money? And then I said, well, it's kind of helped me to be more focused up until we met Bante. And we, back, we were back to Indonesia in 2009, and my mom saw me different. I wasn't as spitfire as before. So one month to three months, six months, one year, I was no longer a Spitfire until now. And so she said, what are you doing? I said, I learned meditation from a big American monk. So, so I said, you want to join? She said, mm, no. And then the next year, um, 2000, it was very hard in the beginning because nobody knew Bante. Nobody really knew me. And... Um, we did uh, when I invited Bante because I thought it was interesting during the retreat in Joshua Tree. Scott had an infection, if Antra remembered. He got MRSA infection. And it was the fifth day of the retreat and I got into Upeka, um, a balance of mind. And I was driving peacefully and calm without fear, without... Um, it's just interesting. I never drew that far before, five hours from Joshua Tree to San Diego. And so um, what's more interesting, I said, there's a change in me. And I want to bring this teaching to Indonesia. So from both of us, uh, he was my first big supporter because I would be working hard translating the books and uh, the breath of love, Anapanasati, Sutta, um, and so we invited Bante on our uh, money, uh, on our time. I wouldn't be working for about a month at the time. And up until um, several years later, he would do four retreats and I would be off work about two months. And this guy has been my biggest support in financial because I wasn't working at the time. And so, talking about the Bande and the teaching, he had been pushing me very hard to sit longer. And this is important. Um, if you might have heard in his talks, he would be talking about that girl from Indonesia who sat for three hours and then got up, got bored. That was me. <laughs> three years. I was so dumb because I didn't know any better that he lead it he led us to a, a happy, a happy moment, which I never experienced in my life. And after I did the temporary ordination for 25 days under him, 
I learned a lot from Bante and also I got into a nice meditation result. And so he got afraid I wasn't going to come back. <laughs> he was so happy when I um, let go of the ordination, temporary ordination. Hmm. So anyway, um, from two of us learning TWIM, the six R's, until now in Indonesia, we, are, we have been doing um, weekend retreats and one day retreats and online retreats. As a translator for him, I learned a lot. Um, so in 2012, he pushed me to teach online retreats. I didn't know anything. I just knew and learned from his interviews and that's how I applied. And in 2015, since so many people were successful, so I've been teaching the assistant mentors um, because Bante and David sent me a nice certificate to be a mentor in Indonesia to teach TWIM. And so right now we have about 70 people in the assistant mentors group and we have groups. We have a center now in Jakarta, at Damasuka, Indonesia, which is, this is my teaching shirt. And so um, I've been uh, letting the assistant mentors to teach online retreats and I, I, uh, I would be uh, watching them in the, in the groups in the WhatsApp groups and I would be um, helping them to how to do the interviews. And I had been doing the 10 days offline retreat. And since the pandemic, I've been doing that uh, for 10 days in June and December would be the time that I would be teaching meditation. And thanks so much, appreciate gratitude to Bante and Sister Kema for guiding us, um, especially me when I had a uh, uh, difficult questions from the students, then I would go to David or Sister Kima. Hey, David, I got a question. How do I answer? So he always gave me answers right away. And also Sister Kima. Um, so that's well, it's the foundation for meditation. And lately, two weeks, one week before I came to the States to join this, because I feel like I have to come uh, and Scott support it. Um, because this is the way we can um, up Bante. And that's why I do a, an Instagram live so um, people in Indonesia also can watch um, to see that this is real. The Damasuka USA is real because it's been only Bante who Indonesia and I did the translation. And so it's been spreading nicely and we have maybe, I, do, I cannot count, maybe thousands of people learning to him and spreading more. And I'm hoping all of you here will be also spreading the beautiful teaching of Twim to any of your communities, wherever you are. So we don't stop Bante's legacy. You wanna say something? No. <laughs> okay. Our closing speaker. Okay. Okay, thank you all for being here. This is such an amazing experience to share this with everyone. And uh, it's so special also um, that um, Sister Kema, we think joined with, joined Bonte. They were so closely connected. And um, we know shortly after Bonte got sick, then Sister Kema also started to become ill. And um, um, they were definitely a team and connected with one another. And it feels really special and powerful to be here and be a part of this. So um, what I want to say is that um, Bante helped to show me the power of forgiveness. And uh, that when you forgive, actually miracles happen. It might sound extreme, but it really, it's exactly like that. Um, Bante had, like, when I first met with him, it's like he had one foot in another realm, in the magical realm. And I think I had really lost the belief in all of that when I came here. I was, uh, this was in 2015, and uh, he brought back um, the magic for me and uh, the belief that um, really special things can happen through this practice. 
So um, I want to, I'll say one thing about Sister Kama too. I got to meet her. She came here when Bonte became ill to uh, help, um, to help take care of him for a few weeks and try to get us some help. And uh, after she left, we stayed in touch a little bit. And I did an online retreat with her. And to me, she said, Kirsten, um, this is the ballad of change for Kirsten Jones. And then it was about a five minute song and I would listen to it over and over again. And I still have it and I can share it if anyone wants to hear it um, later on. But anyway, thank you all. Thank you all. Okay, thank you everybody. That was that was great. Um, so now everybody knows a little bit more about Bonte, and uh, not so much about Usi Lananda. I, I will say that I did a retreat, a couple retreats with Usi Lananda in uh, California, and he was a wonderful monk. He would sit uh, with us uh, on the retreat and sit just like a stone up in front of us, and we're just, he was just such an inspiration to everyone, and. I did an interview with him once and he was, you know, he didn't answer direct. He would, he would answer you later. He said, I, I said, well, you know, based on this experience, am I enlightened? And you know, like, all right. <laughs> and so he says, Oh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. So then later in the, that night in the talk, he said, somebody who is enlightened, is is follows the precepts and does this this and that so he answered me in the in the talk and i thought that was that was pretty neat so that and i was terrified to do it he was such a senior monk but you know i finally got the courage up to offer the monk food and uh so he was he was wonderful he also ordained um monks in the san francisco bay area i i filmed one back in 1980 something and it's on old videotape somewhere. Um, but he was uh, also very, he wanted to get the teachings on the internet and the internet was brand new and he was uploading things, uh, creating CDs um, of, of Abhidhamma, uh, various things. And uh, uh, it would all be available and you could get to it on, on the internet. It was one of the first things on the internet. Anyway, uh, I really pay a lot of homage to him. Um, so I think uh, that's about all, and we will move on with Bhante Kusla and the ceremony. Please pass this on to others. <clears throat> So, um, if you are wondering what the stupa represents, uh, you can look at it now. You see there is a base that is symbolizing faith. And you see three rings above this base that represents the triple gem. And then the dome where we put the relics. Um, this dome represents the seven factors of awakening, all the teachings of the Buddha. And then the square-shaped one on top represents the four noble truths. And the one above also is in square shape. It can take also the round shape. It is where the heavenly beings enter and uh, worship, uh, show respect make offerings to the relics. So usually in Sri Lankan stupas, you will see statues of devas in that chamber. And I have seen this myself uh, in Sri Lankan uh, large stupa called uh, Swarnamali stupa in Anuradhapura. You see these lights coming out from it. Um, early morning hours in the day, and it's amazing to see and it makes you wonder, this must be heavenly beings visiting the relics of the Buddha. And there's a spiral that goes up um, and that usually represents the eightfold path that you all are practicing. And what is on top 
uh, is Nibbana. Nibbana came from Indonesia. <laughs> Sister Brenda brought it all the way from Indonesia. So we have it from uh, yesterday. Um, as we will be chanting, um, you can, well, you are holding the thread. Maybe we'll finish the chanting first, um, and then um, you will be picking a relic or some offering from the table here. And uh, if you like to remove your shoes, you may do so over there. That's why I left those shoes, uh, slippers over there. And there's a carpet came from Nepal. She brought it. I don't know her name. She brought it from Nepal. Uh, and it perfectly fits this uh, space here. Um, and then you can place whatever you want to offer. It can be jewelry, uh, uh, statues, um, anything, gold, silver, crystals, whatever you can get from here. And place it in that relics chamber. And it will be covered and completely plastered uh, later. So no one has access to what you are offering. Um, I'll also tell a little bit about um, my connection with Dhammasukha. Uh, I met Sister Kema when I was teaching in the university in Sri Lanka, and I invited her to teach in, in my class. Uh, it was interesting for students to hear her perspective uh, as a practi practitioner nun. She had so much energy. She was also making bird sounds that she had the skill to do that. I don't know how to do that. Um, so we loved hearing her speak and do these things. And I didn't know she was able to sing until really like two days ago. <laughs> I think she was mindful not to sing in Sri Lanka as a nun. So she didn't want to do that. And then she began speaking in places in Sri Lanka and I became her translator. So she asked me to join her again and again. And then I knew she was communicating with Bhante about me and wanting me here at Dhammasukha permanently. Um, so um, um, when I came here finally, I got the visa. I, I remember the visa officer asking, uh, you can't go there and do religious activities um, on a visitor visa. So I had to say, I am only going to be there for three months. And sister had explained that we'll be doing many teachings and Pali courses and all those things. And I had to tell the officer that, no, I won't be doing that. Um, I'll be back in three months. So I came and stayed actually six months, maybe closer to six months. <laughs> So when I came here, uh, Bhante told me to teach Sister Kema about Bhikkhuni Vinaya, and that didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> so she and I would go to Bhante's cabin, and Sister explains uh, her whatever uncomfortability that she felt, and Bhante was on like that. Um, I was really... Um, here practicing and I was drawn to suttas, uh, especially Bhante teaching from Bhikkhubodhi's translations. And I learned Majjhimini 148 to study um, at the Divinity School. Um, and Bhante didn't like that. He, he said, you have nothing to learn there. <laughs> so he wanted me here, but he also secretly supported me in that process. <laughs> I uh, had to go back to Sri Lanka and get a different visa, from visitor visa to student visa. I had to explain to Bhante that uh, I, had, I did that, otherwise he would think that, that I came here and used him to get to the university. I had to tell him that that's a different process. You can't use a visitor visa to study here. <laughs> um, and, and he understood. And um, later, I kept visiting Bhante at times when he was really sick. Um, and I am, Bhante Samita and I are fortunate to be here, were fortunate to be here when Bhante really said goodbye to us. And I never felt sad, I felt a lot of equanimity. We did the chanting of dependent origination. Um, and David was here, uh, Delson was here. Um, and 
Bhante always had these ideas, you know, how to develop the center and so on. And of course, even the stupa, Bhante wanted it built up in the mountains. We never got to do that, as David said earlier. But when David picked this space, space, I thought this is perfect. You know, we can make offerings, we can see it, we can practice here. So, and it's here with us, like all the other things. So, um, I will also, I, uh, well, we happened to be here when Sister Kema passed away as, as well. Uh, and uh, the universe is somehow telling us that we should continue the Dhamma service as best as we can. Um, um, and I'm sure Bhante is happy that we monks are here and Bhante Satchananda wanted to join, uh, but because of the storm, he's stuck in New York City, but he's continuing the twin practice from there and teaching. I'll also tell the story of um, Venerable Kachan, who made a gold, uh, who offered a golden brick at the time of Kasapa Buddha to be that in any future birth, until he become enlightened someday, may I have a golden skin. That was his wish. And he did have a golden skin even at the time of the Gautama Buddha, our Buddha. And he was also foremost among the disciples who was able to explain brief statements of the Buddha. And uh, another disciple of the Buddha is Bahir, who was wearing uh, tree barks. And uh, when he approached the Buddha uh, and asked for teachings, the Buddha gave very brief teachings. And uh, Buddha said, in the scene, there's only the scene. In the herd, there's only the herd. And Bahir became enlightened with that short teaching. And, but he was gored by a cow and died. Uh, later, as he was looking for robes to be ordained and a ball to be ordained. And uh, when this news went to the Buddha, Buddha said, monks carry his body, cremate it and build a stupa to honor him. Uh, so uh, stories like that pop up here and there. And there's also a story about a Sri Lankan uh, girl whose family was visiting the Swarnamali stupa, really big stupa in Anuradhapura, Sri Lanka. It is still there. Um, and she couldn't go, but she had joy, uplifting joy. And she appeared right in front of the stupa before her family went. So that is what, that's something Bhante used to teach when he was speaking about five, five kinds of joys. So when you make offerings to the stupa, um, you can make a wish to end your cycle, not a golden skin or something. You already have it <laughs> from loving kindness. So Bhante Samhita and I will be offering, because of the time, we'll be doing the Metta Sutta chanting. And after that, we'll, you know, you are, you are you're holding this thread. This means you make the connection with the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, like the three rings down there and Vendra Bhavusilananda. And to Sister Kema, we are making heavenly beings happy. Um, we, are, we are showing a rare quality appreciated by the Buddha. The Buddha said, Katanyu katavedi pogalo dullabho lokasmi. In this world, people who show gratitude is so rare. So this is one way to show gratitude to this uh, great teacher who changed our lives forever toward the good direction. So please join your palms together and listen closely to this chanting. By the power of this chanting, may Bhante, may Venerable Usilananda, uh, Sister Kema attain uh, Supfield. May you be able to forgive the things that you haven't been able to forgive. Um, may good things happen to you. Um, may you receive great health, spiritual friendships, uh, enlightening Dhamma. Uh, may there be every blessing. May heavenly beings undivided attention. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas. 
नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् इति पिशो भगवारहं विज्ञाचरण संपन्नो सुगतो लोक विदु अनुत्तरो पुरिसदम सारथी सत्था देव मनुसानं बुद्धो स्वाकातो भगवता धम्मो संदिठिको अकालिको एहि पासिको पनाइको पच्चतं वेदिताबो सुपटि पन्नो भगवतो सावक संघो जुपटि पन्नो भगवतो सावक संघो न्याय पटि पन्नो भगवतो सावक सामी चिपटि पन्नो भगवतो सावक संघो यदि दंचत्तारि पुरिस युगानि अठ पुरिस पुगलाये स भगवतो आहुने यो पाहुने यो दक्षिने यो अंजलि करनी यो पुण्यक्षेत्रं लोकसातीये ते न सच्च वज्जे न पातु तं रत्नत्त अंगे ते न सच्च वज्जे न पातु तं ऐते न सच्च वज्जे न पातु तं रत्नत्त अंग करनीय मत्त कुसले न संतं पदं अभिसमिच्छ सको जोच सुजोच सुवचो चस मुद्वानतिमानी संतुस कोच सुभरोच सालाहुक बुद्धि संतिन्द्रियोच निपकोच अपगब्बो कुलेशु आनु गिद्धो नच खुदं किंचिये न विन्यु परे उपवदे यों सुखिनो आखे मिनो होन्तु सब्बे सत्ता भवान्तु ये के चिपान भूतत्ति तसावा धावरावा नवसे साधिगावा ए महंतावा दिट्ठावा एव दिट्ठाए च दूरे वसंति अविदूरे भूतावा सबे सत्ता भवंतु सुकितता न परो परंग निकुब्बेत नाति मन्येत कत चिनं कंची ब्यारोसना नान्य मन्यस दुख मिच्छेय माता यथानि अंपुत्तं आयुषायक पुत्त मनुरक्षे वाम्पि सब भूतेशु अपरिमानं मितंच सब लोकस्मिंग मान संभव ये अपरिमानं उद्धं दोच तिरियंच असंभव तस विगत मिधोए तं सतिं अम्मसील वादसने न संपन्नो कामेशु विनेय गब्ब से यं पुनरेति ती ते न सच्च वज्जेन देवा रखान तु सब दाए ते न सच्च देवा रखान तु सब दाए ते न सच्च वज्जेन देवा रखान तु सब दाब भव तु सब मंगलं रखान तु सब देवता सब बुद्धा अनुभावे न सदा सुधि भव तु सब मंगलं रखान तु सब देवता सब धम्मा अनुभावे न सदा सुधि भव तु सब मंगलं रखान तु सब सब संघानुभावे न सदा सुधि बांधु ते सब भीतियो विवाजन्तु सब रोगो माते भवत्वंत रायो सुखी दीघायु को भव देवो वस्तु काले न सस संपत्ति पीतो भवतु लोको च राजा भवतु धम्मिको आकाश अठाच देवा नागा महिधिका पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रखान्तु सासनं आकाश अठाच 
ಿ ಕಾಪುಣ್ಯಂತಂಗನುಮೋದಿ ಚಿರಂ ರಕ್ಷಂತು ಧಂ ದೇಶಿ ಕಾಪುಣ್ಯಂತಂಗನುಮೋದಿ ಚಿರಂ ರಕ್ಷಂತು ತ್ವಸದಿ ಹೊಂತು ಜ್ಞಾತಿ ನೋತು ಸುಖಿ ಹೊಂತು ಜ್ಞಾತಿ ನೋತು ಹೊಂತು ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರಿಸೈಡ್ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆರಿಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ May the suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness May beings inhabiting space and earth devas and nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So I call Jerry is our Vishwakarma Divya Putra. That is the name of the builder in heaven. Because he somehow learned to build this from scratch, brick by brick. And now we have a beautiful stupa. I also thank those Sri Lankans in Canada and in Sri Lanka, some civil engineers who have the experience of building a stupa for guiding us, sending us some sketches. They didn't come as fast as David and I wanted, but somehow we had something to start from, especially that YouTube link. Thank you and please pass uh, uh, the thread back. And uh, you will, maybe David will start uh, putting uh, Uh, relics uh, and items of veneration in the relics chamber and others can follow and that will be the end you want this You may as well circumambulate facing your right toward the stupa, so you go this way, maybe one circle and then that's it. That's the tradition.
Well, I'm, we can keep some more. Uh, yeah. I can get my own. No way. 